Hey guys, how's everyone doing? This is Sir Jedi Sentinel, and welcome back to Sentinel Reviews. Today, we are looking at the final part of Big Finish's celebration of Doctor Who's 60th anniversary. Kinda. If I remember, we'll talk about Coda at the end. Anyway, we are looking at Doctor Who, Once in Future, The Union. Released in October of 2023, written by Matt Fitton, directed by Ken Bentley. The Union stars Paul McGann as the 8th Doctor and features Tom Baker as the 4th Doctor, Carol Ann Ford as Susan Foreman, and Alex Kingston as River Song. As always, because I do these unscripted, there is a blanket spoiler warning in place just in case I decide to talk about spoilers. Doubly important with this because there are some things I cannot talk about in this story without talking about spoilers. So if you do not want to be spoiled, in the description box below is the link to Big Finish's website where you can purchase Doctor Who Once in Future The Union either in standard or special edition format. And Once in Future has been a pretty good celebration of the 60th anniversary so far. It's had its ups and downs. But as an anniversary celebration, it's been really good. Um, the weakest story is still past lives at this moment. But beyond that, and I even like parts of past lives, it has been just really solid. You know, the elements of anniversary have been permanent, have been prevalent throughout the story. And when it hasn't been good, again, past lives, which is the only story I really had a lot of issues with. Even some of the weaker stories, like Genius for War, had some good moments, but even when it's been weaker, it's still been really solid. One thing's for certain, <laughs> if you know my opinions, it's probably gonna be better than what the TV show gives us. That's all I'll say on that. Anywho, so, leading up to what I was saying about Once in Future being a solid celebration of the 60th anniversary, the Union is a spectacular story to go out on. It's got such strong plot elements. It's probably one of Matt Fitton's strongest stories. I was in a group chat, a Doctor Who Big Finish group chat a few years ago, and a lot of the members of that chat really disliked Matt Fitton and his style. Um, I'm more mixed on his stuff. There's stuff I like, there's stuff I didn't like, but I do have to say this is one of his strongest stories. So what is the story? The Doctor has finally reached, um, picking up where Time Lord Immemorial left off, let me start with that, the Doctor has finally, um, wow, so picking up where Time Lord Immemorial left off, excuse me, the Doctor is answering Susan's distress call, and in doing so, he has finally reached the Diamond Array, which was first introduced, or first mentioned, all the way back in The Artist at the End of Time. You know, in one of the galleries, the Fifth Doctor notices, I think it was a painting of something called the Diamond Array, and he kind of realizes that's where he needs to go, but he kept getting delayed or pulled off course. Now he has finally reached it. And of course now he is in the form of the Eighth Doctor. Kind of. Once again, he is suffering from the effects of the Degeneration Weapon, but here it comes much more into play. It is, a, like past lives, it is a major part of the story, and it is used really well here. Like, he is constantly degenerating through the course of the story, and it is a prevalent plot point, like it was in past lives, rather than just a framing device, and it is just used really well. Um, but for m the most part, at least the first half of the story, he is constantly switching between the 8th Doctor, Paul McGann, and the 4th Doctor, Tom Baker. I actually don't really like this decision. Of course, as the finale story, the degeneration is going to come into full play, and we're going to get cameos from the other Doctors, which sort of happens in the climax and the resolution. That I'm fine with. The fact that the first half of this story is split between Paul McGann and Tom Baker, I didn't really like. Just on principle, in execution it was fine, but just on principle, because every other doctor, um, every other living doctor, like I said, I think it was in the Martian Invasion of Planetoid 50, the recasts have just been relegated to cameos, um, every other living doctor got their own story, and the fact that this story, the first half of this story constantly jumps between McGann and Baker and Tom Baker, 
I really didn't like because it feels like Paul McGann isn't getting his own story. Again, the back half is mostly him and it's good. I just didn't like that the first half he didn't get that focus. But Paul McGann and Tom Baker are both great. I don't actually think I've talked about Paul McGann on my channel much. I haven't really, you know, as far as Sentinel Reviews goes, I haven't really reviewed much 8th Doctor content, if any. Like, thinking about it now, I don't remember if I've actually ever reviewed any 8th Doctor stories. But that being said, um, Paul McGann is solid. He's a decent performer, and he plays the role well. It's just, this is probably Time War era 8th Doctor, which is just really hard to talk about. Like, would... Interestingly, aesthetically, the, the Time War look is my favorite Eighth Doctor design, but I'm not really a fan of the Time War characterization of the Eighth Doctor. So, you know, at the start of his era, the Eighth Doctor was very adventurous, very optimistic, very bright-eyed, very youthful. But as time goes on, you know, the universe just continually punches him down, and he sort of becomes a little more nihilistic nihilistic is probably not the right word, but, you know, you start to see the effects of the universe beating down wear on him. And if I'm being honest, this characterization, because for the last few years, this is the characterization Big Finish has focused on, it's just kind of become really bland, you know. Paul McGann is a great actor, and there are stories where, you know, just seeing the effects of the universe constantly beating him down are handled really well. Like, actually, Big Finish's 20th anniversary celebration, or was it 25th, um, Legacy of Time, Lies in Ruins. That was real. That was done really well. But just here, it, it's kind of bland, especially because, like, as far as characterization goes, the Eighth Doctor seems kind of in the middle. You know, he's kind of sort of on that sort of negative, more brooding, time war side, but he's still got some of his adventurous spirit. Um, like I said, the Eighth Doctor is written kind of weak here, but Paul McGann plays it really well. Tom Baker also plays it really well, and it's kind of interesting too, because I don't know if I've said this before, it just shows how alike the Fourth and Eighth Doctors are. You know, um, it's honestly why when they, when they did the webcast for Shada, the rewrites... It, it's honestly why I think they did it with the Eighth Doctor, because they are so alike. And this um, and this story really shows their similarities really well. Kind of like, um, what was it called? The Legacy... No, I just said Legacy of Time. The Light at the End does as well. Um, I, think they, I, I think they work together really well. The other performances are really solid, too. Um, Carol Ann Ford, who reprises her role as Susan, the first companion is really good, as is Alex Kingston is River Song. Um, Ford and, and Kingston have a great chemistry. Actually, all the cast has great chemistry with each other. Um, you know, Paul McGann and Carol Ann Ford, who obviously worked together on The Eighth Doctor Adventures and Susan's War. And then, you know, Alex Kingston and Carol Ann Ford worked well together, and as do Paul McGann and Alex Kingston, who worked together in Diary of River Song and Doom Coalition. And they, they create a really good group dynamic. Um, and actually, also, there's a really touching moment over the course of the, uh, the Doctor suffering the degeneration effect. There's a really touching moment that Susan has with the first Doctor. And it makes me really excited to try... And I really want to get some of Stephen Noonan's first Doctor stuff now. Just, just to hear more of him. Because that scene with him and Susan was amazingly well done. Um, so anyway, like I said, the Doctor is, has arrived at this place called the Diamond Array, and he has come full circle. He has found where the degeneration came from, and he has found the Union. Now, we first got mention of the Union a as the threat that might be responsible in the Martian invasion of T Planetoid 50. Missy told the Tenth Doctor to find the Union. And then in Time Lord Immemorial... The, the Lumiat told the Ninth Doctor that the, the Lumi that the Union is a person. And if you remember, in that video, I predicted that the Union would be a Time Lord, because who else would call themselves the Union? 
And I was right. But she's not just any Time Lord. And I'm surprised no one put this together until after all the revelations and the hints peppered throughout previous stories. I'm surprised no one put this together now. Union. Union as a word, by definition, means to come together, to be joined together. And the overarching plot of Once in Future has been the Doctor being hit by a degeneration weapon and suffering by being forced to cycle endlessly through his other lives. The Union is not just the Time Lord. She is an incarnation of the integer. Now, I know I have a tendency to repeat myself in my videos, but just to try and save time, um, I talked about the integer before. Go and watch my review of Two's Company. But, and there's something really kind of ingeniously done here, because in another 60th anniversary celebration nod, the union is played by Maureen O'Brien. You know, the first Doctor companion, Vicky. And in a story full of strong, spectacular performances, Maureen O'Brien as the Union is, by and large, the show stealer here. She is the best thing about this story. She plays off Paul McGann and Alex Kingston. She doesn't really get a chance to play off Carol Ann Ford that much, but she plays off Paul McGann and Tom Baker and Alex Kingston so well. And she does something really interesting as well, like, so, so she is melodramatic, and she gets to monologue a lot, and she's great there, but whereas other incarnations of the integer, especially the 9 and the 11, because they're the ones we've kind of seen the most, you know, they kind of accept begrudgingly their sort of ailments, let's say, that's probably not the best word for it, but the union... When she talks about it, when she talks about taking revenge on the Doctor and the other Time Lords, there is a lot of pain to what she's saying, you know. She's talked about how she's been suffering from this, um, what do they call it in universe? I'm blanking on it now. From this condition, and that no one seemed to be able to or want to help her. And so she, in a way, she's kind of lashing out at the universe for, because... She's found a way to help herself, and now that she is in a stable condition, she wants everyone to suffer the way she suffered. It, it is grand scheme, you know, typical Doctor Who villain um, plotting, but Maureen O'Brien also brings a lot of understandable pain to what suffering from a condition like this might cause. Like, it's a very, like... Despite how, again, maniacal and evil she appears on top, it's a very layered performance. And like I said, it's one of the best in in this story. Um, but of course, you know, the Doctor breaks out. He actually uses the degeneration to his advantage, and we get a and we get cameos from everyone else. We get cameos from Stephen Noonan, um, Michael Troughton, Tim Trelore, Tom Baker, Peter Davison, Colin Baker, Sylvester McCoy, David Tennant. Surprisingly not Eccleston. He was probably busy or something. Um, we also get cameos from Jacob Dudman as the 11th and 12th Doctors as well. I, I was kind of surprised because, you know, we heard Dudman's 11 in the trailer. Everyone thought Matt Smith was finally coming back to Big Finish. But it, it turns out it's Dudman. And we get his 12th Doctor as well. Which I have defended in the past, so I'm not going to spend too much time on here. But again, as, as the 60th anniversary celebration, it is a nice nod. And we get one other big confirmation. So way back in past lives, I predicted that um, when the Doctor was hit with the Degeneration, it was the 8th Doctor. And it turns out I was wrong. Because it was the War Doctor. And we also get a cameo from Jonathan Carley. I have not heard The War Doctor Begins, but he does a really good impression. He, he sounds like John Hurt, but younger. He does it really well. And it's kind of... Although, it, here's the thing. Um, the War Doctor, in terms of writing, once again falls into that same pitfall he always falls into in Big Finish. At least in the original War Doctor series. Again, haven't heard War Doctor Begins. Is that... Despite him, the War Doctor, 
and future incarnations um being ashamed of his actions being disgusted with his actions so much so that he renounces his name he hates being called the doctor and you know future incarnations look back on the war doctor with sh shame and disgust big um the writers never write the war doctor like that they they write him like another incarnation of the doctor you know it's like and it, it kind of creates this effect of it's like why, why why do people view you like this we never see him do any of like we're always told of the monstrous horrific things he he does but we never see it and in and in this story when the war doctor gets to confront the union he he says that like flat out it's like you know the union tries to destabilize the, the relationship the doctor has with his other selves you know the way the union has with her own personas and you know they say they hate you you're a monster you're not like them and the war doctor's like maybe not but answering a distress call helping those imprisoned rushing in into the middle of a fray like uh, it, it's just calling out how doctorish the war doctor is when in concept he shouldn't be it, it's just a minor frustration with me sorry to kind of go on this tangent this is my big problem with the war doctor we're always told of the monstrous things he's done but we're never shown them and every time we see the war doctor he's acting like the doctor when everything else in doctor who tells us this is not who the war doctor is um, anything else to end on there? Okay, so yeah, like I said, th this is sort of the finale for Once in Future. It is a spectacular finale to a pretty strong series. It's got great performance from all our leads, and especially Maureen O'Brien is the villain. So we have one story in Once in Future left. Coda, the final act. And here's the thing, it's not coming out for a year. Like, I think... I think it's supposed to release in November of next year, if memory serves. I'm sorry, I didn't look it up. But, and more recently, um, I'm going to talk about this and speculate for a minute because I'm a Doctor Who fan. We love to speculate. Um, on Twitter, when Big Finish was promoting Once in Future, someone commented on, hey, why no information on Coda? Why not a cover reveal? Why not a trailer? Why not release it sooner? And Big Finish basically said... The BBC won't let us. It has been interesting to note this year that the BBC has been much more hands-on when it comes to Big Finish. Like, not just Coda, as I mentioned, but Big Finish has also said that the BBC are the reasons why we've gotten no information on the Joe Martin spinoff, the Fugitive Doctor, or the Sasha Dewan spinoff, Call Me Master. This has led to speculation that something that at this point in time is still relevant to the TV show, is going to feature in CODA, the final act. Um, the popular theories are, are um, because again, Once in Future has starred every living Doctor with the recasts being cameos. The speculations are that CODA will either star Joe Martin, Jodie Whittaker, which is my hope, or... Highly unlikely, and even and the one I'm least looking forward if it turns out to be true, the Fourteenth Doctor. But I, I think that's unlikely because in the behind the scenes for Time Lord Immemorial, the producers and the writers revealed that um, Once in Future has been in production since at least the Ninth Doctor Adventure Series One. Um, and the 90A Series 1, you know, Ravagers, Respond to All Calls, Lost Warriors, and Old Friends, that that came out over two years ago, I think. May, two years ago, maybe over two years ago. And we know it was in production at least a year before that. So I think it's highly unlikely that it's going to be the 14th Doctor. Again, Jody or Joe Martin, it seems much more likely. And I would actually really like that. <laughs> But we'll see what happens. We have no information on Coda at this time. But these are just my thoughts. Um, have you heard Once in Future The Union? What are yours? Remember to like, comment, subscribe, 
Click the bell next to subscribe to get notifications when I upload. Please share the video around, it helps my channel grow. And in the description box below, you'll find the links to social media, um, in particular the artist formerly known as Twitter and Blue Sky, where you can follow me and get updates on the channel. This is Sir Jedi Sentinel, and I'll see you guys next time.